Moving on now, people, because nurses and other striking workers demanding inflation-busting pay rises will have to back down on their demands, a union boss has admitted. The new head of the Trade Unions Congress, Paul Nowak, said a compromise could be reached soon if the government joined them at the negotiating table, but... And this is interesting. Ministers are confident that the unions will run out of money by spring, which is, what, just a couple of months away now, isn't it, really? With action costing them millions of pounds every single strike day. Meanwhile, Scottish Liberal Democrat leader Alex Cole Hamilton accused the Scottish government of being stubbornly pig-headed about the issues that impact health workers. And this is another interesting angle on it, because figures obtained by the party reveal that nurses and midwives were forced to take more than 225,000... 100,000, sorry, uh, days off last year. It's a tough one to say that because of mental health issues. So do these stark statistics justify nurses walking out on patients or does a reasonable compromise need to be reached soon for the sake of our country? Joining me now is Scottish Lib Dem MP, Christine Jardine. Christine, very good to see you. I hope you had a wonderful Christmas period. Uh, we're getting stuck straight into it right now, though, I suppose, aren't we? Let's start with the nurses, start with the mental health issue of it. For you, do these mental health figures, 225,000 days off due to mental health last year, prove that nurses need a whopping great big pay rise of over 19%. That will cure their mental health problems, will it? It proves that we've got massive problems in the NHS um, in Scotland and throughout the UK. And what we need is for both governments to actually address the real issues. Because this is not a simple issue of nursing and midwifery staff throughout the United Kingdom saying, do you know what, we want more money. This is... Um, uh, this is a case, and these figures show it quite clearly, of the NHS staff being practically on their knees. They're burnt out. You've just spent the last, what, 10, 15 minutes talking about COVID. Yeah. These are the people who were at the front line during COVID, who got us through that, and who now, I think, deserve a bit of a break and a bit of a boost. And I have absolutely no um, qualms about saying I support what the NHS uh, staff are trying to do. They're trying to bring attention to the fact that we have a major problem in the NHS in this country. Yes, they are underpaid. Yes, they deserve, um, what they deserve more them? money. Is this the right time to strike? No, come on. What, what? Uh, not necessarily. But th there yeah. is a serious issue that the government is just not tackling, and neither is the Scottish government. OK, what would you pay them? What, what would I pay? I don't think it's just about pay. I think it's a much bigger issue no, come on. than that. Yeah, all right, I get that. I'm gonna, I'll ask you about the other stuff as well. No. But Christine, I've got to ask you. No, come on. I've got to ask you. You're saying you support the strike action and stuff like that. You know, we've got this mental health no. crisis going on. Just give me a number. Come on, for goodness sake. It's not that simple. If it was that simple, we'd be able to solve it like that. Well, you must have but something have in mind. You've got to have a percentage in mind. Surely, if Christine, come on. If you could let me finish. If you just you know, make it as simple either or. You don't actually solve the problem. What the nurses have asked for is inflation plus 5%. And I think what the government should do, what a responsible government needs to do, is sit down round the table and talk to them about it. Talk about how the, we improve their working standards, their standards of living. How we get away from a situation where we have more than 225,000 working days lost in a year in Scotland, not the whole of the UK, yeah. in Scotland. And that's a figure that is rising. And so to say, well, do you know, what would you offer them? That's yeah. actually not what this is about. If you go out there and you talk to the nurses, yeah. yes, yeah. they're struggling. Yes, a lot right. of them are at food banks. But it's a problem that runs much, much yeah, deeper. But part of that problem, right, is about retention and recruitment of staff, which means that the yep. current people there are being overstretched and has to do too much, which is down to the fact that there are now a lot of them are developing mental health problems as a result of that. Yep. If the pay was better, then you'd attract more people and you'd keep more people and maybe these problems would yep. go away. And that's why I'm asking you, what would you pay them? Oh, I absolutely agree that recruitment is the key because we've got something like 40,000 vacancies in the NHS up and down the country. And that's why the nurses are so stretched. That's one of the reasons. Now, to get to a proper wage settlement, the government needs to sit down, talk to the nursing All unions right. and come up with a strategy, not just this, like, oh, no, we're not giving them that amount of money. You need to sit down and talk to them and come up okay. with a solution. That's what a responsible government would do. And okay. that's what this government isn't doing. No, that's great. But you'd love to be in government, wouldn't you? And one day you might be. Let's imagine that day is now. What discussions are you having with the nurses when they say we want a pay rise of around 19%? What do you offer them? Two things. 
first of all, that's not what they've said. They've said inflation plus 5%. Right. And I wouldn't have let it get to this situation is the first thing. I wouldn't have let it get to the situation where nurses were so badly paid and so many of them were having to go to food banks. I would have addressed that in the first place. Okay. And then I would sit down with the nurses and say, how do we improve this? Do we have the money to do uh, to do the pay rise right away, or do we have to phase it in? What can we what do? How can rise, we improve Christine? the conditions of service? How can we make your situation better? Talk to them. Listen to what they've got to say. I had a meeting a few weeks ago with the head of the TUC to hear what they have got to say. Um, and I think that that is what is wrong at the moment. I can't put a figure on it because I'm not party to the actual negotiations that are going on at the moment. But what I would say is that I would talk to them and I would find a way of coming up with a figure which improved their situation and which the government would commit to. And Look, the, uh, the big it, point in I, all of I this that you, you I, cannot get away with by trying to pin people down to numbers is that before but, you come up with any numbers, you need to sit down and talk about it.